Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna be talking about, it's Scorpio season, so I went a little bit risque with it. We're gonna be talking about sex symbols. First, we're gonna get a working definition of what a sex symbol is. Then we're gonna talk about what are some possible ways you can find this in the chart. And lastly, we're gonna look at some celebrity examples because really it's celebrities who are the people who exemplify this kind of energy. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, if you wanna know if you have the potential of being a sex symbol, then stick around. Okay, so just the basic definition of a sex symbol is somebody who is kind of universally sexually attractive. And even though that is quite subjective, I think that a sex symbol can be different for everybody and there's certain kinds of sex symbols, but we can just accept that a sex symbol is somebody that is on a large scale quite attractive and sexually attractive, which is a specific kind of attractiveness. So if we break it apart, a sex symbol, sex and symbol, Sex, we already know what that is, but a symbol, what is a symbol? A symbol is something that is amorphous, which means that it could take many different shapes or forms, and it is also nondescript, so it's not specific. It can, a sex symbol can be anybody, you know, anybody could take on that form. And as we get to the examples and start to see the different kinds of sex symbols we have available, we'll start to see that it's really not a very specific body part, it's not a very specific physical appearance, it is more an aura that they give off. It is something about them that is very subtle and it is, even though it's subtle, it is present in all of them and if you train yourself to look for it and to find it, then you'll be able to pick it up very easily. Also, if you have this kind of quality in your chart, I think it's easier for you to pick it up because you're tuned into that frequency. So without further ado, how do you find it in the chart? What is this mystique about these people? Well, in case the words that I've been using haven't given you a clue, it is Neptune, guys. Neptune is that subtle influence that is going to give people this aura, this glow about them that can make them particularly attractive. And as I said, they don't necessarily have to look one specific way. It is more an energy, an aura that is around them, that like little cloud that is around them whenever you see them. And Neptune, what, what do we know about Neptune? Neptune is highly idealized. And the thing about these people, these sex symbols, is that the way that they look, the way that they appear to us is not the way that they are in real life. Because real life is Saturn, the sixth house. Real life is dirty, it is sweaty, it is pit hairs, it is waxing your eyebrows and your mustache, that is the sixth house. And we don't see that in them. When we see a sex symbol, we see the finished product, okay? Not only the finished product, like in the 10th house, but we see the finished product with something of a glow about it, with a really nice subtle filter that makes it highly idealized. So that's the thing that we have to remember when we talk about these kinds of people. So the placement of Neptune is gonna be either in the first house or the 10th house. And the only difference between the two is that the first house or the ascendant has a lunar quality to it. So it makes it more internal and really psychological. You don't really have it in your conscious mind. It's more subconscious. And the 10th house is more solar. So the 10th house is a little bit more conscious. It's the way that you actively work towards your appearance. The 10th house gets called your second ascendant because it's the ascendant that you yourself build. So people with that 10th house Neptune are going to build this mystique over time. If you are a 10th house Neptune and you are really attracted to sex symbols or people with Neptune in the first house and you see them and you're, you see their glow and you're just like, I want to have that. Well, you will, my friend. It's just going to take you a while. The 10th house, Capricorn, everything that has to do with that takes time. And that's that glow up that you have to work on over time in order to achieve. But the first house people, there was something about their upbringing, their environment when they were children that made them need that Neptune there. They, they needed to be receptive. They needed to be empathetic, empathic. They needed to 
sense the vibes in their environment. There was something about their environment that required them to have that. And the blessing that they get in return is that aura that gets built about them that allows them to connect with others in a very soft sort of way. So now let's get into the sex symbols. And I am just gonna shout out names just so that you can be like, yep, 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 yep. All those people were sex symbols. I'm just, first I'm gonna give you some names of all the sex symbols and then we're actually gonna look at the charts of some people. I'm gonna look on my phone because my computer is dead because I that's the kind of life I'm living right now. So the first sex symbol is just gonna be an example for you and that's gonna be the Venus of Willendorf. Think about what the Venus of Willendorf represents. I'm gonna pop up the image in case you don't remember the name, but this is an image, an idealized image of fertility. This is what ancient civilizations regarded as sexually attractive. A woman with large breasts who could feed her young with wide hips, which means that the baby wasn't gonna get stuck on the way out. That sexual attractiveness has looked different throughout the ages. And that is going to be reflected also in the celebrities I'm gonna be talking about, as you'll see. And some people are gonna get mad by my inclusion of a certain someone in here, and I'm gonna defend her, so we're gonna get there. So the Venus of Willendorf is the essential, the first primordial sex symbol. And now let's get into our celebrity sex symbols. And first and foremost, I'm going to include Marilyn Monroe. Obviously Marilyn Monroe is a sex symbol that is inarguable and I don't think I even have to say more. Marilyn Monroe. There's this really famous Marilyn Monroe quote. I'm going to insert it here, but she said something about how even she didn't look like Marilyn Monroe. She was like, Marilyn Monroe, I'm not even Marilyn Monroe. And what she, I think what she meant by that was that the image that she projected, the image that she showed us, took a while to curate. And even though she has Neptune in the first house, nonetheless, it is some, Neptune is always going to take work. You don't just wake up in the morning and look like a goddess. You create that image. And when you have Neptune in the first house, creating that image is going to be very important to you because that's your personality. And her rising was already Leo. And Leo risings already have a tendency to be attractive. And what I mean by that is because the sun radiates, Leo risings are ruled by the sun, and the sun already radiates as it is. And her rising Leo was radiating this elusive quality, was radiating this sex symbol persona. And that is what made her so physically attractive. And her son was in Gemini, and Gemini people are really attractive, really sexy. Gemini people are extremely sexy. So they're really flirty. And that is what she was projecting onto the world. And next we have Elvis Presley. I had to include a dude in here, even though the sex symbol status isn't necessarily so much associated with men and I will tell you why. It is because the sex symbol kind of has to be a vessel because the sex symbol has to take in all of everyone's projections and ideas of what sexual idealization looks like or what sexual like perfection attractiveness is going to look like and men tend to be more especially men who are famous tend to be more aggressive more yang energy and a sex symbol has to be more yin and elvis presley had that neptune and that's what allowed everyone to pour their fantasies onto him and next we have alia alia i absolutely love and she too was a sex symbol she died and she left us with that image of her she was so young and she throughout her career she very much curated that image of mystery about her and my friend Mina, who loves her, was telling me that Aaliyah really loved the 50s actress Victoria Lake, who I really loved too, that whole, it's that actress that would have the, you know, the, the eye covered. And Aaliyah used to study her movies in order to get an idea of how to create that mystery about herself. She said that. And I don't know if you guys remember, I'm gonna pop up some pictures of Aaliyah with the hair. And what does that do? So when you, how do you um, get to know people and how do you read people? You look at their eyes. So the eyes are the windows to the soul. And if you cover one of your eyes, you're not, you know, you're not showing the whole thing. You're being a little bit mysterious. You're creating a bit of an illusion around you. And you know, that builds that whole mystique about you. So Aliyah very much knew that and she curated that and she created that for herself. And that's why we remember her as a sex symbol. And next, the woman that a lot of people love to hate, Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian has, of course, Neptune in the first house. So I want to talk about that later and the downside of having Neptune in the first house. So 
Here's a woman who is extremely successful by, you know, popular standards. She has a lot of money, has a lot of fame and power in the world and influence, right? And that's wonderful. But what people don't realize, especially when they bash her and say like, oh, she gives women unrealistic standards of what beauty is, you have to understand that she has Neptune in the first house and her physical appearance is going to be extremely important and not just looking beautiful, which she already was when she was just like a natural person, but she wanted to heighten that and she wanted to take it to the next level because again, Neptune is a fantasy. Neptune is not Venus. Venus is natural and Neptune is a heightened form of it and that's why we have all of this plastic surgery. Kim Kardashian has that Neptune in the first house and she also has Mars in the first house. Very interesting, just like Megan Fox. And, but she is a rising Sagittarius with Jupiter in Virgo. So that is that focus on perfection that she has. And she also has Venus in Virgo. So guys, when we criticize Kim Kardashian for doing so much, you, we have to understand that first of all, she's got Venus in Virgo, Jupiter in Virgo, Virgo midheaven. So that is that perfect image that we see. And she has Neptune in the first house. She really can't help it. You have to understand that maybe like she doesn't feel okay with herself if she doesn't take out some ribs and have like tiniest waist known to mankind that's just what makes her happy and i don't know if it's healthy but it is what it is i'm not here to judge i'm just here to talk betty page betty page doesn't have neptune in the first house but she's a pisces rising and Neptune is like a concentrated version of what we think of when we think of Pisces But I wanted to put her in there because I absolutely love her and she is a sex symbol She's an underground sex symbol for sure And I believe she had Uranus in her first house We're gonna look at her chart That rising Pisces with Venus in the first house and Uranus So that's what made her so rebellious And it made her do something that she said that she never thought she would do That she didn't see it as pornography But Nonetheless, like she expressed her creativity in that way. Um, the next person is, I want to include more dudes. So Shah Rukh Khan, I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly. I call him Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> Shah Rukh Khan, SRK, is an actor, an, a Bollywood actor, and I absolutely love him. There is absolutely something mysterious and attractive about him and you have to you might just see a picture of him and you'd be like no he's not hot he's not attractive but you have to watch him in a movie and these people are especially attractive when you see them moving because neptune has this watery quality about it and like water moves it's you can appreciate it in, in still images especially if they're edited but you could see it better when the person is moving on video and not in real life because you won't get the full you know the lights you won't get the projected quality of the neptune but i think that is it is best seen on video and also clara bow do you guys know who clara bow is she also is a rising pisces so as we said pisces isn't necessarily neptune neptune is the concentrated form like like orange juice concentrate right so Clara Bow is another one. She's got Saturn in the first house. So that's what gave her kind of that sourpuss face too. So yeah, in all, Neptune is what gives that elusive quality to these people that makes them so collectively attractive, but there's not a particular, it's not like, oh, they have great legs. Oh, they have great lips. They have, no. And Neptune people, some of them, some of the ones that I mentioned are just naturally extremely beautiful, like Megan Fox is just naturally beautiful. But Marilyn Monroe, if you looked at her before she really curated that image for herself, she really looked more just normal and ordinary. And over time, she created and she was able to create that image that she really wanted to be, that heightened, idealized version of herself. Remember that that's what Neptune does. It creates a highly idealized version of yourself. It is like your highest self. But, you know, when it's in the first house, it's like exterior. Or in the 10th house, it is projected onto your... Uh, your reputation and the image that you want people to know you by if you have it in the 10th house remember don't feel bad if you're not like relevant and roll goals yet it's gonna take time and you have to figure out how you're going to create that image for yourself and what you want that image look at the sign that Neptune is in that helps a little bit and any other planets in there so it's creating that idealized version and just remember that that idealized version of yourself is is not really you it's a version of you it's not fake either it is just it is what it is it's a symbol 
that you represent. So that's the video for today, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or if you want to know about Neptune in other houses, I made another video about Neptune. I already have, oh wait, no. Did I already make a video? Yes, I have plenty of videos on Neptune. I'm going to like put them in the little thingies here. And thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.